Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I am Aparna Vedapriya, in charge Professor HOD in the Department of Anatomy, Usmania Medical College, Hyderabad. So today's topic is lymphatic system. Before we enter into the topic, if a patient presents with enlargement in the axilla or there are few enlargements in the side of the neck or one of the leg is hugely enlarged. Why does that happen so? And maybe because of the improper drainage system of the body. So let us see how does that happen. So lymphatic system is network of vessels that help to maintain body's fluid balance and protect it from pathogens. In short, it takes care of the immune system. It is a drainage system which is accessory to the circulatory system. Without it, the immune system would not function. It also returns fluid from the tissues to the blood. 85% of fluids that leak out of blood returns back to blood via the blood capillaries, but the remaining 15% returns via the lymph capillaries to maintain the blood volume. Main functions of the lymphatic system are, it returns fluid from tissues to blood, returns large molecules to blood as 25 to 50% of blood proteins that leak out of capillaries each day are again transported back via the lymphatic system. Absorb nutrients and transport fats. Hemopoiesis is maintained mainly the white blood cells of which the lymphocytes and it also helps in body defense maintaining the immunity of the person. So basically, the immunity is of two types, innate immunity which is acquired by birth and acquired immunity which is again of two types which is active and passive. Inactive, there is a natural and artificial active acquired immunity. In natural active acquired immunity, for example, a person is having chicken pox and he has the immunity to chicken pox forever. So that is what is natural immunity. And artificial immunity is brought about by vaccinations. When the baby is born, there is a vaccination schedule. For example, BCG is given, which takes care of the immunity towards the tuberculosis. And Coming to the passive acquired immunity, the passive immunity is transported via the maternal blood. So it is again natural and passive. Natural is a very short lived uh, immunity where the maternal antibodies which are present in the newborn baby takes care of the immunity for a very short period of time. Whereas artificial passive acquired immunity is obtained from giving antibodies to the infection that the patient has. Coming to the cells of lymphatic system, main cells of lymphatic system are lymphocytes and these lymphocytes are of two types, T cells and B cells. The T cells in turn are of three types, helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells and suppressor T cells. B cells in turn are of two types which are 
the plasma cells and the memory cells. The other types of cells are the natural killer cells, macrophages, dendritic cells and reticular cells. All these cells are seen in various parts of the body within the lymphatic system. The different types of lymphoid cells are identified using immunochemical techniques to detect special markers or the specific markers which are called as cell differentiation markers which are specific to cells. For example, CD34 is the cell differentiation marker for hemopoietic stem cells. That is how there are different markers for different types of lymphatic cells. Now coming to the detailing of T cells. The T cells are produced in bone marrow but are matured in thymus. That is the reason they are known as T cells. These T cells are responsible for cell mediated immunity. The T cells have surface receptors for specific antigens. On stimulation, T cells secrete cytokines which are the basis for cell mediated response. Cells that are recognized as body antigens are eliminated during development. That is normal body cells themselves act as antigens and they react against the other normal cells destroying them. So that is recognized and such type of cells are eliminated during development. If suppose the incomplete elimination of self reactive cells persist that leads to autoimmune diseases like juvenile diabetes and multiple sclerosis. Helper T cells, these are key regulators and they have the cell differentiation factor as CD4. They help other cells in immunological processes. The maturation of B cells to plasma cells is taken care by helper T cells and this happens when B cells are encountered with the antigens. And these helper T cells or help other subtypes of T cells when stimulated by macrophages. These coordinate immune responses and these helper T cells present antigen to B cells to produce cytokinins that guide cytotoxic T cells for their cell mediated immunity. And these helper T cells also help other cells in immunological processes. Suppressor T cells, they have CD4 or CD8 as markers. These suppressor T cells inhibit the response of the helper T cells once the function of helper T cells is over. Cytotoxic T cells have CD8 as marker and they kill virally infected cells and tumor cells. B cells. The B cells originate and mature in bone marrow. So is the reason the lymphocytes that are matured in bone marrow are termed as B cells. These are responsible for humoral immunity. B cells have antigen specific receptors on their surface that is the immunoglobulins and these B cells when exposed to antigen they mature and proliferate to form plasma cells which secrete the antibodies and memory cells which are responsible for secondary response because these memory cells already have the antibodies and are circulating in the blood and when the same antigen is presented they produce antibodies more quickly to prevent the recurrent infection from the same pathogen. The natural killer cells, the large lymphocytes with granular cytoplasm, they are activated by interleukin 2 
and have the ability to kill tumor cells and virus infected cells. When these natural killer cells are activated by interleukin 2, they release cytokines and perforin which penetrate into the cell, lyse the cell membrane and induce apoptosis to kill abnormal cells. The natural killer cells have CD2, CD4, CD16 and CD56 as markers. Dendritic cells. These dendritic cells capture antigen and bring back those antigen to the lymph nodes for the further immune activity. Reticular cells. These produce reticular fiber stroma that supports the other cell types in the lymphatic tissue. There are coming to know about the immune response which is the main property of the lymphatic system to be taken care of. The immune system depends on recognition of antigen, neutralizing or destroying antigen with lymphocytes. So the microorganisms which are considered as antigens are first recognized by antigen presenting cells which are macrophages which patrol in the connective tissue that is the local environment. So once the antigen is taken by the macrophage in first encounter and this antigen is presented to the B cells under the influence of T helper cells which produce cytokines the B cells proliferate to form plasma cells which produce antibodies that will be circulated in the blood and the memory cells which have the antibody and also circulate in the blood to prevent the recurrence of the same infection. So the immune response occur in all body tissues because these antibodies and the memory cells are put into the blood circulation. So there are two types of immune responses. The humoral immunity which is taken care by B cells and cell mediated immunity which is taken care by T cells. So let us see about the humoral immunity. It is again of two types, the primary and the secondary. So this primary immunity is seen with first encounter with the antigen. So the antigen is naive to the antigen presenting cells. So this antigen induces the immune response and this antigen is taken by the macrophages which are considered as the antigen presenting cells and this antigen presenting cell presents the antigen to the B lymphocytes and these B lymphocytes proliferate under the action of cytokines which are released by the T helper cells. With the action of cytokines, the B lymphocytes proliferate and produce, divide to produce the plasma cells and the memory cells. The plasma cells are responsible for the production of antibodies which are put into the blood circulation and the memory cells along with the antibodies are also put into the blood circulation which have the tendency to suppress the recurrent infection when presented by the same pathogen which acts as an antigen. In the secondary response which is seen with the second encounter with the same antigen. So this is mainly taken care by the memory cells because the memory cells are already having the antibodies for the say antigen with second encounter. So they are presented with the antigen and the antibodies are produced more faster which circulate in the blood to take care of the immunity. So the antibodies here serve as opsonins that is they enhance phagocytosis. So the opsonization of bacteria enables the macrophages 
to phagocytose and destroy bacteria more rapidly. So, this is the best example taken for vaccination. Coming to the cell mediated immunity, B cells cannot have effective defense against protozoan parasites or viruses. They require the cell mediated response which is taken care by T cells and this T cells does not respond on antibodies. The cell mediated immunity does not depend on production of antibodies. It is carried out by cytotoxic T cells directly attacking the target cells. The T cells which are circulating in the blood migrate through the connective tissue continuously. If cytotoxic T cells encounter a parasite and that binds to the cell and the T cell gets activated that is the cytotoxic T cell gets activated and an encounter with the virus the cytotoxic T cell induces perforin into the target cell, they lyse the cell membrane and lyse the cell totally and this is what is cell mediated immunity. In transplantations which also is mostly dependent on the immune system and the presentation of lymphocytes which tells the rejection or non-rejection of the graft that is being transplanted. For example, in extensive burns there can be a rejection of graft when the graft is non-self donor that means if the graft is taken by some other person. If identical twin or the self graft is taken the molecular histologic complex identical to the graft recipient will be present and the graft is not rejected. Like in the heart transplantations, kidney and liver transplantations, postoperatively the reagents which block the immune system are given to prevent the graft rejection. Coming to the components of the lymphatic system, what exactly the lymphatic system is made of? Two basic components of the lymphatic system are the lymphatic vessels and the lymphoid tissue under which there are various types of lymphoid tissue that are seen in the body. They are the lymphoid organs which are considered as primary lymphoid organs which are the bone marrow and thymus which are the structures responsible for production and maturation of main B and T cells and secondary lymphoid organs where there is hosting of the B and T cells that are seen are the spleen, lymph nodes, Bayer's patches, tonsils, appendix and etc. There can be diffuse lymphatic tissue as well where there is no proper regular organization which when the lymphoid tissue is associated with mucosa it is considered as malt that is mucosa associated lymphatic tissue. When the lymphatic tissue is associated with gut then it is called as galt that is gut associated lymphatic tissue. When it is associated with bronchi it is called as balt which is called as bronchi associated lymphatic tissue and nalt is known as when the lymphatic tissue is associated with nasal mucosa, nasal mucosa associated lymphatic tissue. There is salt also where it is associated with skin that is skin associated lymphatic tissue and these diffuse lymphatic tissues do not have capsules. 
lymphatic nodules. These lymphatic nodules are again of two types which are the primary lymphatic nodules which appear before birth and there is no germinal center because they are not exposed to the antigens. And there are secondary lymphatic nodules which can exist either in a solitary stage or in an aggregated form where they do have the germinal centers because these secondary lymphatic nodules are exposed to the antigens. The lymph travels only in one direction, it does not circulate like circulatory system. The lymphatics are absent from avascular tissues and wherever there is no connective tissue like it is absent in epidermis, hair, nails, cartilage, cornea, cartilage and cornea because the nutrition is purely by diffusion there is no vascularity there. Brain, spinal cord, lung units because there is no connective tissue that is present out there and in thymus because there is no connective tissue number one and the T cells are matured in thymus and are sent to the circulatory system. So, there is there are no lymphatics that are present in the thymus and the T cells are directly sent into the circulatory system. What is lymph? As blood circulates through the body, nutrients, wastes and gases are exchanged between the blood and the interstitial fluid also. The capillary beds from the arterial ends, they force the fluid out of the blood and cause most of it to be reabsorbed back at the venous ends. The fluid that remains behind in the tissue spaces becomes a part of the interstitial fluid that enters through the lymphatics and is called lymph. Lymph is a clear watery fluid that resembles blood plasma and has proteins. The lymphatic system handles about 125 ml per hour or amounting to 3000 ml of lymph per day that is poured into the circulatory system. Lymphatic vessels. The fluid that leaks from the vascular system is returned back to the circulatory system via the various lymphatic vessels. The lymphatic vessels provides a one way route for the movement of interstitial fluid to the cardiovascular system. As we said that there is no circulation of lymph in the body. So, the lymph that is collected from the interstitial tissue spaces is poured back into the circulatory system. The function of the lymphatic vessels are they return excess tissue fluid to the bloodstream, return the leaked proteins back into the blood and they carry absorbed fat from the intestine to the blood through the lacteals. How are these lymphatic capillaries? These lymph capillaries are small blind ended lymphatic vessels which form a network in the interstitial spaces. The lymph capillaries weave between the tissue cells and the blood capillaries in the loose connective tissue. Their permeability is due to two unique structural modifications. The endothelial cells of the lymphatic capillary are not tightly joined. Instead, the adjacent ends of the cells, they overlap each other loosely forming easily opened 
flap like mini valves. Cells of the lymphatic capillaries which do not have the basement membrane are anchored by the collagen filaments which adhere on to the cells of the lymph capillaries and to the adjacent structures, thus anchoring the lymph capillaries. So, whenever there is a more pressure in the interstitial space, the mini valves open up and pour the lymph into the lymph capillaries. And when there is increased pressure in the lymph capillaries, the mini valves are shut so that there is no backward flow of lymph from the capillaries back into the interstitial spaces. So whenever there is increase in the interstitial pressure, there is only one way route where the lymph enters into the capillaries and these collagen fibers by which they are, the cells are anchored prevent the collapse of the lymph capillaries due to the increased interstitial pressure. When the fluid pressure in the interstitial space is greater than the pressure in the lymph capillaries, the mini valves open up allowing the fluid to enter into the lymph capillary. The endothelial mini valve valves are forced to close preventing the lymph from leaking back into the interstitial space. Since the gap of the mini valves is large enough, the proteins in the interstitial space also enter into the lymphatic capillaries easily. When tissues are inflamed, the lymphatic capillaries develop openings that permit uptake of even larger particles such as cell debris, pathogens and cancer cells also. This threat to the body is partly resolved by the fact that lymph passes through the lymph nodes where the cell debris and all are filtered and the lymph that is cleared of the pathogens and cell debris is further taken ahead by efferent vessels from the lymph nodes. Lymphatic capillaries which are called as lacteals are present in the finger like projections that are seen on the intestinal mucosa. The lymph draining from the digestive viscera are milky white because they absorb the fat. The fatty lymph that is absorbed from the intestinal villi is called chyle. So the green color structure what is seen in the core of this villi along with the blood vessels is the lacteal which absorbs the fat that is absorbed from the intestinal villi. The lymph vessels are thin valved structures that carry lymph. To begin with, the lymph vessels they start as lymph capillaries and these lymph capillaries unite to form a larger lymph vessels and these larger lymph vessels converge on lymph nodes as afferent lymphatic vessels and once there is drainage of this lymph and cleansing of the lymph that is taken care by the lymph nodes, the lymph is drained from the lymph nodes by efferent lymphatic vessels, which in turn unite to form lymphatic trunks. And these lymphatic trunks unite to form either the right lymphatic duct or the thoracic duct. Both the right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct which are the main lymphatic channels, they are drained into the circulatory system at the junction of the subclavian and the internal jugular veins. The lymphatic vessels have the same three tunics as veins 
like tunica intima, tunica media and the tunica adventitia. The only difference being the lymphatics are very thin walled and have more internal valves than veins and they anastomose more rapidly than veins also. The lymphatics in the skin that is mainly in the dermis travel along the superficial lymphatic vessels. But the lymphatics in the trunk and in the digestive organs travel with the deep arteries. The lymphatic trunks are formed by the union of large collecting lymphatic vessels. The major trunks are named from the regions from which they collect lymph. They are, they are paid subclavian lymphatic trunks which collect lymph from the upper limb. The jugular lymph trunks which collect the lymph from the head and neck region and bronchomediastinal lymph trunks which collect lymph from the thoracic region, the lumbar lymph trunks which collect the lymph from the lower limbs and there is an intestinal trunk which collect the lymph from the abdominal organs. And all these lymphatic trunks are poured on the right side into the right lymphatic duct and on the left side into the thoracic duct. So the right lymphatic duct drains limb from the right upper limb and the right side of the head and neck and the right side of thorax. The larger thoracic duct receives limb from the rest of the body. It arises anterior to first two lumbar vertebrae as an enlarged sac which is called as cisterna chile. So this cisterna chile which is formed in front of the two lumbar vertebrae form from two large lumbar trunks and from an intestinal trunk. So the cisterna chile which is formed in front of two lumbar vertebrae is formed by two lumbar trunks and one intestinal trunk. And from the cisterna chile, the thoracic duct arises and runs superiorly. It receives the lymphatic drainage from left side of the thorax, left upper limb and left side of the head and neck region. The right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct drain at the junction of subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein where the lymph is poured back into the circulation. The larger lymphatics receive their nutrient blood supply from branching vasa vasorum which are present in tunica adventitia of the lymphatic vessels. When the lymphatic vessels are severely inflamed, the vasa vasorum become congested with blood. As a result, the pathway of the associated superficial lymphatics becomes very much visible through the skin as red lines that are very tender to touch and are called as lymphangitis. Itis is inflammation. So whenever there is inflammation of the lymphatic vessels, it is called as lymphangitis. So overview of the lymph circulation is from the interstitial fluid, the lymph is taken by the lymph capillaries which join to form afferent lymph vessels which pass through a number of lymph nodes where the lymph is being drained and cleansed and by the efferent lymphatic vessels, the lymph is drained from the lymph node and they unite to form the lymph trunk and these lymph trunks join to form a main lymphatic duct either the right lymphatic duct or the thoracic duct and the lymph is poured back into the circulatory system at the junction of subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein and again by the pressure of the arterial ends 
there is perfusion of the fluid into the tissue spaces as interstitial fluid and again the lymph is formed and the circulation goes on. The factors that are influencing the lymphatic circulation are the filtration pressure which is seen in the interstitial spaces, the rhythmic contraction of the smooth muscles, the arterial pulsations because the lymphatic vessels are very closely associated with the arteries either the superficial arteries or the deep arteries and respiratory movements and the negative pressure that is present within the lymph vessels. If there is any blockage to the flow of the lymph that can lead to edema. So, there can be edema that is usually seen in the lower limbs because it is the flow is against the gravity and this obstruction to the lymphatic flow can be mainly due to injury to the lymphatic vessels or the inflammation of the lymphatic vessels are followed by surgery that is postoperatively the accumulation of the lymph or the defective drainage of the lymph is seen mainly for the surgeries for cancer like for the breast cancer when the lymph nodes of that area are removed there is no proper drainage of that area into those lymph nodes. So, there can be edema of the lymph on which side the memory gland is being removed or the lymph nodes are also resected and can be due to parasitic infections which is mainly the elephantiasis. It is called as elephant leg. That is the reason there is enormous increase in the size of the leg because of the accumulation of interstitial fluid beyond normal limits in the interstitial space where the lymphatic vessels are being obstructed by the parasite. And the edema as I said is also seen in metastatic cancer. Metastasis is when the cancer cells break free from original tumor and travel to the other sites in the body through lymphatics which are called as secondaries of the cancer. For example, again for the carcinoma breast, the cancer cells can gain entry via the lymphatics into the cervical vertebrae. So, the cancer cells have their secondaries seen in the cervical vertebrae. The primary lesion is in the breast and the secondary lesions can be seen in the vertebral bodies because of the metastasis of the cancer cells from the carcinoma breast to the vertebral bodies. Now coming to the different lymphatic organs that we come across are the bone marrow and thymus which are regarded as primary lymphatic organs. The lymph nodes, spleen, uh, payers, patches, tonsils and appendix are considered as secondary lymphoid organs. The infectious microorganisms that manage to penetrate bodies epithelial barriers quickly proliferate in the underlying loose connective tissue. These microorganisms are fought off by the inflammatory response by phagocytes that are the microphages and the neutrophils and by lymphocytes. So, the primary lymphoid organs are the thymus and the bone marrow. The secondary lymphoid organs are the spleen, the payers patches which are seen in the small intestine that is the terminal part of the small intestine that is in the ileum, the lymph nodes which are mostly seen in the axilla groin and in the neck regions and the tonsils. So, the primary lymphoid organs, these organs generate lymphocytes from immature progenitor cells or the stem cells and provide an environment in which they mature either in the bone marrow or in the thymus. 
The secondary lymphoid organs are the organs which maintain mature nave lymphocytes and initiate an adaptive immune response on presentation by the antigen. So, the lymphocytes they arise in the bone marrow from the stem cells, then they are sent through circulation where they mature into two main varieties of immunocompetent cells the T cells, the T lymphocytes or the B cells, B lymphocytes which protect body against the antigens. The activated T cells when they are sent to the thymus where they mature to form T cells, the activated T cells manage the immune response by directly attacking and destroying the infected cells. The B cells which mature in the bone marrow and are transported into the secondary lymphoid organs, they protect body by producing plasma cells which in turn secrete antibodies into the blood. The antibodies mark antigens for destruction by phagocytes. Bone marrow contains the stem cells which are responsible either for producing T cells or B cells. The bone marrow also produces new red blood cells every day along with white blood cells and platelets. Bone marrow contains mesenchymal and hemopoietic stem cells. The white blood cells which are produced from the bone marrow are mostly the lymphocytes which are produced and are sent to the primary lymphoid organs for their maturity. Thymus. Functions primarily during early years of life for building a large reservoir of T cells. The thymus is a glandular tissue which is found in the superior mediastinum where it partially overlies the heart and is present deep to the sternum. T lymphocyte precursors mature to become immunocompetent T cells in thymus. The thymus is prominent in newborns. The thymus continues to increase in size during the first year when it is highly active. After puberty, it starts to atrophy gradually and by old age it has been replaced almost and entirely by fibrous and fatty tissue. The thymic lobules they have an outer cortex and inner medulla. Most thymic cells are all T lymphocytes. The thymus do not have the lymphoid follicles because it does not have B cells. The thymus provides an environment for T cells to mature and proliferate a process called as lymphopoiesis. In the cortical regions, the rapidly dividing T lymphocytes are densely packed which are represented here in the violet color. But very few macrophages are scattered among them. Medullary areas contain very fewer T lymphocytes plus thymic corpuscles or Hessel's corpuscles are found in medulla. They consist of concentric walls of degenerating epithelial cells. The Hessel's corpuscles are responsible for the release of cytokine TSLP which is the thymic stromal lymphopoietin which stimulates the T cells maturation in the thymus. So, the immature T cells which are generated in the bone marrow travel to the cortex of the thymus through the bloodstream. And within the cortex of 
the thymus, immature T cells undergo proliferation in which they are exposed to growth factors and antigen receptors. Then the T cells are sorted by thymus so that only T cells that express T cell receptors on the surface and that can bind to foreign major histocompatibility complex molecules will only survive while the rest degenerate via the apoptosis because most of the immature T cells which are in the process of the maturation they become auto allergen to one another in the cortex of the thymus and these auto allergen T cells they degenerate because they cause harm to the normal T cells that are present in the cortex and these destructed T cells by apoptosis are cleared by macrophages. The surviving cells will not mistake the self molecules as antigens. This process is known as positive selection. The T cells that bind to body's own cells test positivity for autoimmunity whereby they attack body's own cells instead of foreign cells. Such type of autoimmune T cells are eliminated by apoptosis in the process known as negative selection that is they develop as autoallergens we said. So that comes under the negative selection resulting in only around 2 percent of the immature cells to reach maturity which are then transported to the bloodstream. The hormone thymosin is produced by the thymus which promote the maturation of T cells prior to their release into the bloodstream. So the bloodstream contains only the mature T cells and not the immature T cells and the medulla of the thymus also contains only the mature T cells which are transported to the bloodstream. The immature T cells are present in the cortex which undergo positive and the negative selection and then are transformed into mature T cells. The central tolerance is the ability for the T cells to avoid perceiving normal host molecules as foreign antigens. The reticular epithelial cells. It forms a continuous sheath which lines the inner surface of the capsule, the trabecular septa and around the blood vessels at the corticomedullary junction and the cortical and the medullary capillaries. The reticular cells are connected with one another by desmosomes a form of cell junctions. The epitheliocytes help in maturation of T lymphocytes through hormone thymosin. The degenerating lymphocytes and the epithelial cells they concentrate in the medulla to form Hazel's corpuscles which are formed in the medulla. The reticulum is formed by epitheliocytes. So there is absence of reticular fibers in the thymus. The autoimmune diseases occur when central tolerance is lost which causes lymphocytes to recognize host molecules as antigen and attack their own normal cells. So to overcome this problem there is a blood thymus barrier 
to keep blood borne antigens from leaking into the cortical regions to prevent premature activation of immature T lymphocytes. So, the stroma of the thymus consists of epithelial cells rather than reticular fibers. So, the thymic barrier consists of the epithelial cells and then the endothelium of the capillary and the endothelial cells of the capillary. So, which prevents the leakage of the antigens that can get exposed to the immature T cells which are proliferating in the cortical region of thymus. Now, coming to the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are arranged as clusters along the lymphatic vessels of the body. They are usually embedded in the connective tissue. Large clusters of lymph nodes occur near the converging of these lymphatic vessels to form larger trunks. Lymph nodes are well distributed around the chest, around the armpits, around the neck and in the abdomen. Antigen presentation by dendritic cells occur in the lymph nodes which triggers an adaptive immune response which is the humoral response. Lymph node filters with an internal honeycomb of connective tissue filled with lymphocytes and macrophages. These red things are macrophages. So, this is all a reticular network. So, this core of the lymph node is formed by the reticular network which keeps the lymphocytes and the macrophages in their position and that helps in collecting and destroy bacteria, viruses, foreign matter from lymph. Lymph nodes are considered as storehouse of B cells, T cells and other immune system cells such as dendritic cells and macrophages. The sites where adaptive immune response are triggered. So, these dendritic cells they present the antigen to the lymph nodes and macrophages are the antigen presenting cells themselves which present the antigens to the B cells that are matured in the lymph node. The lymph nodes have two basic functions both concerned with body protection. 